I have been waiting for this buff for a long time. I thought Cleo's like upstairs and her skills were like really, really solid. Like they put a lot of dedication into making this uh, character like good. Unfortunately, she just did not fit the meta that she was in at all. Um, or when I started playing the game, like the game was already shifting towards always needing a battery. So Cleo having charge per turn, it kind of had to, she had to be relegated for her CQs. Now she got her battery, her Imperial, Imperial privilege is guaranteed all the time. And <laughs> this is like, this is her base MP damage now. It is consistent. It is in line with all uh, all these other SSRs. And Gray sits here. It's not fair for. It's not fair to. Well, I don't even want to say it's not fair because like the damage isn't that far off. Like you've got MP2 Cleopatra. You're matching what Gray's MP can do. Uh, not too sure on the farming situation. I I have to see the numbers. But yeah, MP2 Cleo is matching MP5 Gray for base damage. Uh, but remember, Gray has power mod. You, there is no contest if you're bringing fighting undead uh, as the mobs. Yeah. However, uh, in comparison to the other SSR five star assassin, woo, Sammy Rami needs a buff so fucking bad. She needs it so goddamn bad that her base MP5 damage without like without the Buster Res down only barely beats Gray at MP1. That is abhorrent. Uh, yes, the Res down makes it helps a lot, but you can't double stack that with Buster farming. Uh I'm not gonna say like semi like Cleo didn't deserve the buff and semi Ramis did, but semi Ramis needs her own buff. All right, let's get started. Every time I see Cleo, it just reminds me I have to like actually like finish playing Danganronpa, and I just like that has been on the back burner for actual like literal five years. All right, base attack. It is low for a five star. The midpoint is 11.5k, and she is already below that point. However, they usually do this for servants that have like attack buffs. They usually make the attack lower in comparison just because uh, that attack buff is going to scale way more for a unit that has 13,000 attack over someone that has 8,000, right? 40% of, or let's make it cleaner, 50% of 8,000 is 4,000. 50% of 13,000 is 6.5 thousand attack buff the higher base attack the higher an attack buff scales and again cleo has imperial privilege you can guarantee it now and you can double stack it in buster farming that usually doesn't give attack buffs only the dp the dps has to give the attack buff so cleo's just cooking right now and i can't wait to see what her damage numbers actually look like MP charge 1.06, uh, 25.5% star gen with a six hit extra attack. Like mighty chain Cleo is disgusting. And the fact that you can go MP quick arts, he is 100, like you like for CQs, you're not using 50% start. You're using black rail and you're not, you're not going to feel the difference. Like her, her just base cards are so, they're so good. They're so good. Like she, Cleo was actively just held back by the fact that she didn't have a battery. Uh, Imperial privilege, 40% uh, attack, 40% defense and a 3k heal on a five turn cooldown. So they have been buffing Imperial privilege a lot lately. They have not buffed the people that have it at the highest rank or this rank, but they have buffed Umus 
and they made it so she can guarantee this. But the difference with between Umu and Cleo is that the, uh, Umu's uh, Imperial Privilege got buffed a while ago. I still think Cleo is going to get her Imperial Privilege buff. I still think it, even though this is a lot. Is Ozzy going to get his buff? Probably. I... Uh, I, like, actually, I don't know. Because Ozzy's has always been guaranteed. His was always guaranteed. So... I don't know. I don't, like... I, I'm hesitant to buff Ozymandias again. Because he, like, he already spits on uh, Quetzalcoatl. Like, so hard. Like, there, there's no competition between you picking Ozzy and you being, uh, picking Kets. Because how, like... He's gotten so many more buffs. And once again, uh, this is not live yet on the wiki. So we got to go here. Second skill. Before, 40% MP gain, 10% gain per turn, uh, 1,000 heal per turn. This was solid. This was solid for a CQ servant, especially one with Mighty Chains being in the game now. Uh, you were gonna get so much goddamn refund off uh, Arts Guard refund. Now they guaranteed Imperial Privilege at 40% for max rank, and you have a 30% battery, so she's able to do Buster Farming. She was always technically able to do Buster Farming, but A, Imperial Privilege was not guaranteed, so there was a chance like, you can do double bitch, but your damage was could have been close to semi Ramis because you might not have actually had the attack buff. Now, that isn't a problem. And in CQs, you can definitely start with Black Rail now. And, again, don't worry about Oberon. CQs, like, unless you're planning for it, you don't, like, you're probably doing face cards. You're not banking on Oberon. Most CQs these days are not three turns. Oh. Alright. So, this awesome skill buff, what she needed to put her in the current meta, and it, it, it's just how the game developed. Could she have had the battery at the start? I, I kind of don't think they were even, they would have done it. I don't think they were going to give her a battery at the start. They were still working that out, I believe. Uh, oh, yeah, no. Year two. She was the second Halloween. Yeah, no. There was no way they were going to give her a battery. Third skill. Invol for a turn. Cleanse. And 20 crit stars. I don't have I don't have a problem with this. This is a really good survivability skill. And with you being able to double stack it with the bitch, it's star bomb too. 8% star gen as a passive and divinity for tickle. That's it for her passives. Uh, I mean, her base star gen is already good. They didn't need to give her that much more. Appends. So. In my personal opinion. He is not one of the servants that this is going to matter that much uh, I do think the skill reduction is helpful but if we're thinking this in a buster farming setup there's an issue when your skills are less than four cooldown it means that you can double pop them in the same exact turn but you have to be using both bitch skills for that Otherwise, your cooldown gets kind of awkward and you're just reducing one turn of cooldown instead of the full two. Uh, just because of like how changing the turn cooldowns work. Uh, like if you have a three, if you have a two turn cooldown uh, and the turn ends, it's down to one. Well, now you're only reducing one turn with itch. Like you're not. Like, 
this only like we only got this like two days ago um you're, we're gonna have to give it like a week or no not even a week a month before we see like what servants like truly truly need this um but with lasagna already saying these skills you're supposed to be able to swap them on and off i don't know if there's going to be a currency for that i i would imagine there's a currency i don't think they're just going to let us swap a pens like whenever we want but who knows they we can do that with command codes now but mana loading definitely you're gonna need this first uh as a cq servant i do i would prioritize extra attack finesse over the cooldown 100 percent, because this is gonna last you the entire fight this is gonna make starting off like honestly a little more awkward like buster farming like like the reason you max out the skills is both because of the cooldown and uh, like the values like if you don't have if you don't have skills like maxed out the solution is not get skill ro uh skill reloading it's max out that skill so this should uh, unlocking this should not be a solution to you not having enough lures because it's gonna create its own problems and you're you're definitely gonna have to start thinking of uh skill pop uh, anti saber, and it's whatever. All right, she has a buffed MP, which again is why I was comparing her to Semi Rami's. She has a buffed MP too, and her MP is still sh like her. This MP still almost does double the damage. It's off by like six thousand, but like, ooh. Yeah, but damage to all enemies, five hit AOE, inflicts bu buff block one time three turns. I like Jolter because she does something like this, but this, you can't double stack buff, buff block. They have to use it. You can't just like load this up, unfortunately. Um, but buff block does waste an enemy uh, action. So if you are able to spam this and they're always trying to cleanse it off, uh, which I can actually see riders doing like, often like i feel they would definitely be popping skills a little more um and yeah five a thousand damage to herself she literally heals it, it this is nothing oc 30 percent buster uh base and then it scales with overcharge and it lasts for a full turn cleo is very expensive though like three different gold mats and that's just regular skills or but her pens are fine i don't think her her uh pen skills are egregious um i do feel her main skills are will annoy a lot of people though one c mp damage 25 percent uh everyone's defense goes down by 10 percent though unfortunate Leo is solid now. I have no problems not recommending her for people. Um, I do think if you have Gray and you're just looking for a Buster Farmer, just use Gray. Um, yeah, ju just use Gray if you're just looking for a Buster Farmer. Uh, if you want to have fun, use Cleo. Um, yeah, like I like Danganronpa and I like Danganronpa Bridge, so I really like this art style. Usually I try to give a little more uh, time for Cleo, but she doesn't have like super crazy stuff going on that like I need to explain. Like Cleo just got simpler. Always pop skill two first and then skill one and you're good to go. Uh, future buffs. It's probably gonna be Imperial Privilege. Um, I think um, they'll probably just do 20% Buster and call it a day. Maybe 30 and then uh, crit damage. Yeah. 20% buster, 30% crit damage. Uh, and then they'll probably call this a day. And that is based on Nero. Yeah, like that's what they did for Nero. Um, and they even gave her 30 arts. 
and this is a stronger version of that skill. Um, the only reason I think they'd hesitate for doing that is because Cleo is a buster servant. So Umo is not expected to be double popping this. Cleo is, which is why I'm like saying 20 buster. Um, it lines up well with the MP, gets her uh, full mana burst. All right, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed, drop a like or sub. Hope to see you in the next one. Peace.